Shortly after falling ill, the Duke Guillem VIII perished in the spring of 1180, leaving the Duchy of Aquitaine at the tender mercies of a regent who hated young John I. John quickly worked to improve relations with his vassals, dispensing gold and titles to those most aggrieved at the boy Duke. Forced to seek the tutelage of a drunkard, John's future was far from certain, and by December of 1180, two ambitious men propped up a cousin of John as the Duchess of Aquitaine. This was put down quickly through the use of hired swords and vassal levies in the spring of 1181, and two rich ransoms were extracted from the rebel counts. In the wake of this succession war, the pretender sued successfully for house arrest, and a period of calm prevailed. The young duke showed stiffness of spine in January 1183 on the occasion of a drunken count murdering a servant at a feast, earning John a reputation as a harsh but just ruler. An outbreak of general peasant lawlessness in November 1183 took a more serious cast when Count Guillaume of Angeline and the aforementioned murderer count rebelled in favor of a pretender from outside the realm. This was again put down quickly through the expeditious use of hired men in May of 1084. Duke John was forced to make a hard decision as Clemencia de Portiu attempted to escape house arrest in 1085, only to be thrown into the pit for her troubles. This act, as well as the putting down of two rebellions and an outbreak of lawlessness obtained for the realm five years of peace, and aside from the occasional incident of overdrunkenness at a feast, the land healed. John's minority finished out in the summer of 1090, with his chancellor, Count Robert of Alverne, successfully penning legal claim to the county of Maine after more than ten years of trying, and sufficient gold and respect for Mother Church attained to declare himself King of Aquitaine. Okay, let's try and join the crusade for Jerusalem. Excellent. So, this game is called Crusader Kings, and for obvious reason. And uh, so we're embarking on our first crusade. So the Pope uh, called up a crusade a couple of years ago, and uh, I couldn't participate because I was too young, but now I can. So uh, basically, uh, I'm treating this as an all hands on deck. We're going to go to the crusades, and we're going to try and get fame, piety, money, and, and glory. Um, what's at stake? Well, basically what's at stake is that uh, if we win the crusade, uh, the person who has the largest contribution in war score will have the opportunity to keep large holdings uh, in the Holy Land. Aside from that, um, the opportunity exists to obtain what's called the Crusader Trait. The Crusader Trait makes you uh, a pretty good fighter, and it also greatly improves uh, the opinion of churchmen to anyone who's gone on crusade. Definitely worth the trouble if you have the opportunity to do it. So basically the ground rules for fighting in the crusade lands are the same as fighting anywhere else. Try and avoid getting crushed, use maneuver, get on your ships, off the ships, that kind of thing. What's especially effective here in the crusade lands is since a lot of them are right there along the coast, you can use your ships for uh, escaping enemy forces that uh, you detect. Uh, so you'll see, uh, you'll see me do this here uh, a couple of times.
Wow, that was a pretty lucky break. Go down here and see whether or not I can take another key from that, add a little bit to the war score, and get some piety and gold. Now, if I wish to, I could quit right here and walk away with the Crusader train. Staying in the Crusade lands and continuing to fight is an extremely hazardous proposition. You can get your ruler killed, you can get your ruler captured, you can get yourself generally messed up uh, being so far away from home. So, you know, definitely consider whether you're really going to be in it to win it, uh, be a big part of the fight, or whether you're just there to get a little bit of reputation and the trait. Nobody can uh, take the fact away from me that I you know, went to the Crusade lands with my men, so... There is uh, definitely uh, discretion being the better part of valor involved in all of this. This is especially true in a case like this where I've got, you know, a rebellion uh, back at home. You know, pretty much I've got to pack up everything I got right here and head back home because I've got bigger fish to fry than this uh, crusade, which is, while an important part of the game, not the main thing. I think you can appreciate how hard it must have been to uh, get all the feudal lords of Europe to cooperate in something like a crusade given all the, the difficulties and the outbreaks of violence and uprisings and general disorder that was going on in uh, all the places in Europe at that time. So, um, yeah, just basically everything uh, moving back to Europe. Get all, all over back to Aquitaine and uh, get this army moving up here and take care of these guys. Once, uh, once that mercenary retinue gets up to strength, that is. It's always a good idea to uh, take those opportunities that were just presented there to uh, improve uh, your technology or get something you know, good. Unless it really costs too much money, in which case, obviously, you've got to not do that. So, I'm not going after his forces because my plan is, uh, as always, if I have the strength to assault his holdings and break them down like a shotgun, and then bring victory on that one. Take down of his things. Hold off on disbanding those guys. This will go fairly quickly here. Okay, so now let's see. My vassals think here. Crushed a major revolt, still a tyrant. And he wants to marry Philippa de Poitou declining it for the same reasons as before. What is the Count of Paragord? We'll take his county. Then, I will release him. You, however, will just hang out in your prison. So, My holdings are right here, all concentrated among these, these counties here. Bordeaux. Saint-Tome. Poitou. Paragord. Who else can I imprison? I can imprison the Prince Bishop of Asian, or Elaine de Poitou. Can I revoke his title? No, not without penalty.
Okay, so now creating titles. We give you 400 prestige, costs 347 gold and 200 buy. Very good. Now I see also that I get the plus one domain size for Gavelkind now because I've got enough enough stewardship to uh, make 30% equal one. Alright, we shall do it. I've created the Kingdom of Aquitaine. I can also create the Duchy of Bourbon, and the Duchy of Alvern. Now you see here that I have too many held duchies now that I've become a king, as I said before. Now can I revoke his title? Yes, I can. And I will. Then, I'll hold on to him for a time and release him at a later date. He's quite good, but not good enough. I rule in the Kingdom of Aquitaine. So now is the time for me to press on the issue of the... Ah, see, I can't have another retinue yet. I need to increase the size of my realm. Okay, very good. Call him and then let's put him to work. There, in Anjou. So what I can do is I'll create a corridor here of claims that I can press against France. A claim on the county of mine. On a claim on the county of Anjou. I have a claim that I can press there. We cannot fight against one another because the crusade is still ongoing. This character is no real great shakes in terms of his skills. His wife assists him greatly in terms of his stewardship and his intrigue, but his low diplomacy is a definite hindrance. Bishops like me very much, mostly because I was a crusader. But the fact that all three of these bishops are content is a rather interesting thing, and very good. Sometimes when you uh, get to an even state with your uh, 
your realm. You just want to let it sit. You don't want to do anything to mess things up. At present, I'm mostly just waiting for my wife, Queen Adela of Aquitaine, to get pregnant. Now is a good time to press for medium crown law. This will allow me to draw a much larger levy. I can see that it's working out quite nicely. I should have it within the year. Excellent. cannot hold a feast yet, owing to my low prestige. Hmm, interesting. Not prestige. Ah, it's because we are yet on crusade. Very well. So she got what she asked for. It pays to keep your relations good with the church. raise up almost 2,500 troops, plus I have 500 in a retinue. Not too bad compared to what I used to be able to do. Hmm. He's very unhappy with me. There's not much I'm going to do about that, though. What about the Countess of Marsan?
Yeah, well, yes, I did increase the crown authority. Burnett, what is this nonsense of you wanting to duel? Very well. Proceed. Whenever you have a, a vassal who you like or who has not severely offended you, if you have the opportunity to lift an excommunication, you should definitely do so. It will certainly make them like you a very great deal. And the cost is typically very, very reasonable and small. allow this to be the case. threat, but my dynasty continues, and I can make good use of her. So now... So right now we cannot declare, well, yes, yes, the crusade has failed. So now I can declare war on the king of France. I have many de jure claims. I can claim each of these counties. might be the time. All right, this is fateful now. Salt. Hmm, do I send him a gift? Yes. Yes, Francelli. He has a bishopric. Rather than arrest him, I will revoke his title. Now I have his title, ah, even with the gift. Okay. Get to work on the religious technology, or the cultural technology. Excellent. Now, I must pr 
press as hard and as fast as I can before the King of France either defeats or brings these counties back into the fold. My daughters are providing many, many sons for those men that they married. Expand your mercenaries and avoid the cost. It's a very good idea. Now, so I have one too many counties. My vassals are going to be fairly upset about the fact that I have too many, too many things here. So let's see here. create a new vassal, thereby reducing my domain size. Minus 10 for too many duchies. What do I gain for having this extra duchy? extra 0.2 prestige per month. I have three duchies. Aquitaine, Gascon, Poitou. Which two do I want? Which two do I want? Do I want this one? that are together. The way to do this is to look at this. Point two tax. Four. By looking at the, each of the holdings, 4.4, 4.0, okay, and then, so this says one, two, three, four, so two extra, one, five. Four, five, five. So five times three, fifteen, nineteen. See, the thing about this one is I can never hold this one because this is a prince bishopric. This one always ends up being the one that I uh, plot to take and then give to a second son so that I can keep the keep the holdings together. A lot of the time when I've played this, I've done it with these and these up here. Who 
wants the Duchy of Gascon. He wants the Duchy of Gascon, but he is ambitious. He will not stop with the Duchy of Gascon. He will want the Kingdom of Aquitaine eventually. Sure. She's embarrassed to lose. I've expanded out into Toulouse now. I will now claim mine as well. twice as expensive. then this war will end. This gets to about 40 to 35 percent. 30 percent here I will go ahead and assault, even though it will cost me some of my fighting force to do so. Hmm. 
indeed. Right. Now. And again. And again. I cannot declare war again. I have a truce with the King of France until 1107. So it will be impossible for me to continue to expand completely unchecked. However, I could declare war pressing for the claims of my spy master, who is now the Duke of Gascon. vassal here. He does not want the county of mine. It's Norman. Perhaps what I should do in this case is invite a noble to court. He is not an especially able man. I will marry him to this woman here. And then I will make him the count of count of mine. Thereby bringing my domain back to the size that it needs to be. Squaring things away a little bit with my vassals. chaplain to work in Angelin. He might be able to bring that man around to supporting me. And some of that dislike comes from the fact that I've held their vassal levies for a long time. The thing to do now is to not be too terribly aggressive. Although... It's possible that this man could die any day. If, however, I declare war against this man to take his county, easily be joined by Castile, a power with which I am not prepared to get entangled. Let me see. How 
supposedly defending against Duke Albert the Noble. His children. Who are they married to? Nobody. King of Castile. His heir is a young boy. Four. And even younger boy of one. This is here. It's a position to do a lot of fighting. And so now we end out the decade. Another ten years, most of which young John has been king of Aquitaine, seen substantial expansions of the kingdom, and we're well on the road to taking over all of the traditional de jure lands of Aquitaine. So this is where we'll stop for now, and we'll pick up again in the next episode.